Hello, General Mario here, bringing you my review of Chromag Rally Extreme, a port of the original Chromag Rally released in North America in 1998 for the Mac. Originally developed and published by Pangea Software, it was later ported to the Xbox 360 on February 21st, 2012. The developer behind the port is Citizen 12 Studio. Chromag Rally Extreme is a kart racer much like Mario Kart or Diddy Kong Racing, but the major theme of the game is based on the Stone Age, with Chromagnons as the drivers, Brog as the male driver, and Grag as the female driver. The tracks are designed based on various time periods, some of them not being in the Stone Age. There's a desert track, a jungle track, glaciers, which is a snow-themed track, Crete, a track based on ancient Greece, with annoying statues as obstacles, the Great Wall, which is based on the Great Wall of China, with gongs that if you hit them correctly will give you a speed boost. Giza, based on ancient Egypt, with various enemies as obstacles. Medieval, which is based on the Dark Ages, with catapults that throw exploding projectiles. And cauldrons, which if you run into them, they explode. Viking Village, with two themed enemies, one being Vikings and the other being Trolls. The final race map is Atlantis taking place underwater with sea mines and sharks as obstacles. You have an assortment of carts to choose from, starting with the Mammoth Mobile, the Bone Buggy, the Geode Cruiser, the Logmobile, the Turtle Tank, the Hot Rock, the Trojan Horse, the Obelisk, the Catapult, and the Chariot. Each have their own stats, with those being speed, acceleration, traction, and suspension. However, there is one special vehicle that is only used in the Atlantis track, which is a submarine. Controls are simple. The left stick controls your steering. Right trigger is your accelerator. Left trigger is your brake in reverse. B button also brakes. Left bumper switches the camera view from third person to first person. Y throws items forward or just uses the item that you have in your inventory. And A throws the item backward or uses the item. The turning feels okay for the carts. It's not too loose like some other kart racers. I'm looking at you, Super Mario Kart. The controls also change when using the submarine, with pushing up on the left control stick to move the submarine upwards, and pushing down on the left control stick to move the submarine down. The submarine is actually slower than most of the carts, making it easier to control, which is okay, but I would have enjoyed it a little more if the sub were a bit faster. Items are available like most other kart racers, including bone bombs, bone projectiles you throw which explode on impact, super suspension, a passive power up that makes your kart less prone to sliding when hitting other racers, sticky tires another passive item which prevents you from sliding on oil, oil is a throwable item that is slick trap, landmines which do exactly what you think they do, homing pigeons which lock onto the nearest racer and circle them until they explode, Bottle Rockets, which is a rocket that flies straight ahead or backward until it finds a racer to home onto, or flies into a part of the track. Roman Candles, which act like javelin missiles and home into the nearest driver, which if you are far ahead means that they will home onto you. Freeze Bombs, which are thrown and create a nice explosion. Nitro accelerates your car for 5 seconds and stacks every time you pick up and use another Nitro. And while in the Atlantis race, you have access to another item, the torpedo, which works like the bottle rocket that seeks the nearest submarine, though they do have a timing to them and will explode after a certain amount of time. The items are alright, but nowhere near as good as the items from other kart racers like Diddy Kong Racing or Mario Kart. The music is actually pretty good, in my opinion, and the most memorable portion of the game. The only problem is that the music is not looped properly and ends abruptly before starting again. The rest of the sound effects are pretty loud, especially with the engines for the carts, which does take some time getting used to. Graphically, as a 3D game from the late 90s, it's fairly good. Aliasing is a bit better than I remember it being when I first played it on an iMac G3. 3D objects have a low amount of polygons, including the driver models. Probably the most jarring thing is the texture work. You'll notice the environmental textures have a lot of lines between where textures meet each other. The textures on vehicles have some of the same issues, as well as the character models. Settings available in the game are really, really light. Music volume, vibration on off, and difficulty for single player with easy, medium, and hard settings. Easy makes the AI really dumb. I was able to lap almost all the other racers while racing on any track. Hard definitely forces at least two racers to constantly keep up with you if you're in first, making it technically harder. And medium is just like that. It's in the middle. You may want to just go with medium or hard whenever you play single player. 
The reason why I picked up this game is that I used to play this game a lot in elementary school back on iMac G3s we had in our computer lab. But this port is missing two major things that made that version really cool. The first thing missing is the game editor that was available with the iMac version. You could change the gravity of the carts, or increase or decrease the speed of the carts, among other options. We spent hours messing with this game, breaking it however we could see fit. But sadly, that's not available in this version, which is really a crushing blow to anybody else who's played this game. The other thing is that this version is missing the six-player multiplayer that the original version had through its LAN feature. Instead, it supports four players online as well as through system link. What is nice is the split-screen feature that was available in the original version is available in this version. Though I'm not quite sure since I haven't played the iMac version in a while, but it seems like the split screen in this version has some frame rate issues, as the carts seem to be running a lot faster than they do in the single player mode. The multiplayer features the standard race mode, but also features a capture the flag mode, where red and green teams must capture torches from each other, bringing them back to their base. The tag mode requires one person who is it to ram their cart into another cart and tag them, and then try not to get tagged back. With the capture the flag and tag modes, they feature their own set of maps. Aztec City features various pyramids. Colosseum is a big role in Colosseum. Maze is exactly as it says, a giant maze. Celtic is a mountain with various ramps leading to different levels. Tar Pits is like maze, only with tar pits to slow you down. Stonehenge is based off the real place and also features one of our favorite exploits, a wizard that gives you infinite items if you're next to him, so that way you can spam whatever items you want, usually the homing pigeons. Spiral is a lot like Maze, but in the shape of a spiral. Ramps has a lot of ramps, plus it features snow drifting. Like I said before, we played six-player LAN almost every time we had recess inside in elementary school. It was always an intense competition between teams and capture the flag or everybody for themselves and races and tag. In my opinion, it's still fun to play even today if you can accept the sound and graphical limitations. And the gameplay is still decently fun. If you think it looks too bad graphically, or if the features seem too light for you, then you can honestly skip this game, especially if you don't have anybody else to play this game with. Multiplayer really makes it worthwhile. This is General Mario, see you later!